Hey guys, how's it going? This is Bat Property Solutions. My name is Hani Brahan. I'm Michael Abata. And I'm Benjamin Zagai. Today, on today's episode, uh, we have a special guest uh, by the name of Danny Mariano. Danny runs a, uh, a company called RTS Reno. STS Reno. Sorry, STS <laughs> Reno. Uh, seek to serve. Um, Danny has 35 years of, uh, of, of construction management experience. Uh, under his tool belt, and he has supervised, um, you know, thousands of uh, of projects. Danny, uh, thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to this. All right. So, I mean, we'll just jump right right into it and right into the questions. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about SDS Reno and its uh, services? Yeah, it's a company we started. Um, I started a few years back as a real estate investor. Uh, I do real estate investment. We have a tank sweep company and we do renovations also, repairs, renovations. We take care of um, a lot of realtors, a lot of people that are buying and selling homes. If they have an issue with the property, I go out there and I, you know, I point them in the right direction. And if they need something done, I take care of it for them. Try and take, uh, take all the headache out of the, out of the process for people when they're buying and selling a home. Yeah, that's awesome because there, there, there can be a lot of headaches when it comes to, to renovations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, sellers end up with things, you know, the, the home inspector mm -hmm. comes through and he finds issues with this and issues with that. And it either comes down to getting a credit or they want the thing repaired, you know, whether it's electrical or structural, whatever it is. And uh, okay. I have a whole slew of people around me that can take care of those issues. You know what I mean? And, and they're all good. They're solid people. They're, they're legit. And their prices are reasonable because I give them a lot of work so they know to do the right thing with me. Nice. So I, uh, I can get people a good service at an affordable price where it's not breaking the bank. And it, uh, it just helps deals to go through smoother. Like the transition just goes through a lot easier when, when things are taken care of and uh, everybody's happy. So does, does the size of the project matter in terms of uh, the, the services you do or? Um... No, not to, no, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I'll, I'll put an addition on a house, you know, after a buyer buys a home, I went with a client a few weeks ago, they were looking at a house, that was in their price range, but they wanted to turn into a mother daughter. So I went there with them. I told them what we could do, what we couldn't do. And I believe they're actually under contract right now to buy the house. So I'm going to do that for them. We're going to add a level. We're going to blow it out a little bit in the back and make it, you know, separate entrance for the daughter because she wants to be separated from the mother. You know, they love each other, but they need to be apart. That's cool. <laughs> you got to have your space, right? That's how you maintain <laughs> yeah. the love. <laughs> and that's you do also family counseling. But first. Yeah. When I first went there, they were, um, you got to feel people out and, and make them feel comfortable and, and, and understand what they want to do. And not, so you don't waste your time or waste theirs. And, you know, the, the mother came to me separately and she's like, you know, I love my daughter, but I need her to be over there, you know? And, and then but the, the daughter came and she says, I love my mother, but I need her to be over there. We got to separate, you know what I mean? So you got to figure out what you're dealing with and make them understand what they can and can't do. And then uh, it usually comes together once they're happy and they feel comfortable with you. You know, they, they want to work with you, and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to get that job. You yeah, know, I gave them a part of what the price is going to be to, to do it, and they were okay with that. It all worked out within their budget. So it's, that's, it's actually, probably, it's that's probably actually a great point. point right there. I mean, what are the critical items to check for um, before buying a home? Like, if, if they were to check in with you before buying a home, what are the critical items that they should be keeping an eye out to make sure they're doing a good investment? I look for the mechanicals. I make sure the mechanicals are in good shape. I mean, the, the most important thing, get a home inspection. Uh, I use lesser homes for all my inspections. Um, I'm not a home inspector, but I do have the ability to point somebody in the right direction. I look at the mechanicals. I look at the, the foundation, the structural, you know, is everything good? Is there cracks in it? Is there, is there horizontal cracks, vertical cracks? That all means different things. Um, if you have a good footprint, you usually have a good structure on the, but you never know. You can have termite damage. There's, there's a lot of things to look for that most people who are not in the trades don't know what to look for. So you have to kind of point them in the right direction and tell, look, this is going to cost $2,500 to fix. This might be 5,000. The heating system is on its way out. It's older. You may have to replace that three years down the road. You, know, you just kind of point them in the right direction and let them know where they're at and make them understand what they may need to do with the property. So what does that process look like? What, at what point would we bring you into the loop in order to make sure in a buying process? So a buyer's trying to buy a house, what's the best time 
for them to bring you in the loop and what is your process of, of, of setting them up? I usually just get the phone call when they're in the process, like when they're getting ready to go into attorney review or whatever, because they just want to, they want to know, they want to make sure that they're doing the right thing and that, that the property is going to work for them. And it, it's a phone call. You call me up, I get there. I make sure, you know, I'll do a walkthrough in the house, check out the, everything out, check out the decks, check out everything, make sure everything's sound. If they need to add a handicap ramp or something like that, I let them know if they can do that or not. Sometimes it's for elderly people that, you know, the father needs a, a ramp for his wheelchair, whatever the situation may be. I just go there and, and feel them out, see exactly what they need, and then tell them what it's going to take to do that. So the, the earlier in their process, the better, right? For them yeah. to get you involved? Yeah. Don't wait till the last minute when you're out of attorney review and then come in and call me and say, Hey, what do you think about this? You know, cause then at that point it's too late. You're, you know, you're going to own that property. Already locked. Yeah. Right. But at that point, like I said, most of them get a home inspection anyway. Um, and the home inspector, they do pretty, like, like I said, I use less of homes for all the inspections. And, uh, when I recommend somebody and they're very thorough, no but nice. so it's, you know, I, I, but I, I go in there and, and make recommendations. So again, like if they want to do an addition on the house, something like that, that's where I said, the home inspector is not going to tell you that. Yeah. You no, they're just protecting themselves with the, right. the, the, what they're going through. Yeah. Yeah. They're there to look at the property that's existing and tell you what's good, what's bad. You know, is the sidewalk crack? Is this bad? Is there electrical issues? Whatever it is. And then I'll come in after that. If they want to do something additional to that, you know, add a level, whatever they want to do. Can we change this deck? Can we do that? The home inspector tells you what's there. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what you can do after the fact, after you do other Nice, nice. And what about um, why should every single person get a tank suite? You, you got to be crazy not to. It's, um, it's not a lot of money to get one done. I do provide a tank sweep service. And once you buy that property, if there's a tank in the ground, and most attorneys will, will make you get one. You know, if you have a good attorney, he's going to tell you to get a tank sweep done. Because if you buy that property, you sign that contract, that tank becomes yours. Now, three, five, seven years down the road, if you go to sell that property and there's a tank in the ground and the new buyer does a tank sweep, that's on you. And like removing a tank is not a big deal. It's not a ton of money. The problem is when the tank leaks. If that tank is a leaker and it contaminates the ground, then you have a problem. And... If it goes into a neighbor's yard, you know, it contaminates your ground, goes into a neighbor's yard, then you have a bigger problem. So for the little bit of money that it costs to get a tank sweep done, it's money well spent. It saves you a ton of aggravation. It'll kill your deal. It'll kill your deal. People mm -hmm. find there's a tank on the ground, they get a soil sample done, and it's over. They don't, nobody wants to deal with that. It could cost you twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 to get a tank out of the ground and cleaned up when there's uh, contamination. Wow. So in so, Massachusetts, yeah, we, we don't often see um, underground tanks. What we do see is, though, above ground tanks. Um, that's a common thing here in Massachusetts, it seems. Although I've seen some properties that have underground tanks. Right. Um, when it's above ground, is there any um, concerns people should have? Um, well, at that point, if you're going to take it out, you have to change your heating. So if you're going to switch over to gas, it's not that big of a deal. You, it's above the ground. You have visual on it. You can see what's going on, if it's got a problem or not. Yeah. So it's not that big a deal. It's not that expensive to take out. You know, a company will come, they'll cut everything loose, they'll get rid of the lines and make it go away for you. That's not a big deal. When it's in the ground, which we deal with more in North Jersey, there's above ground here too, but it's more in the ground. Um, that's when you end up with the, with the situation where you have to, where you could end up with a problem where, you know, you get a leaker and it, it, it's a bad day for everybody. Wow. Yeah. It's good for the tank removal company. They're, they like it. <laughs> they love those jobs. Yeah. Yeah. We've they had a couple that. jobs fall through because of um, tank issues. And yeah. Sometimes uh, you can come to an agreement with the seller. Uh, and sometimes you can't because, um, but right. once they know about the, the, the contamination, it, it has to be taken care of regardless because it's an environmental issue. Right. Now, though, like in that situation, the seller may have to agree to take whatever the cost of the removal is. You know, if it's fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, that seller's going to lose $20,000 off the price of what they originally wanted for their house. You know, it's just, it's, it's a bad move not to get a tank sweep done for, like I said, for the little bit of money that it costs, it's money well spent. It just doesn't make sense not to do it. And, and again, a good attorney will, will push you to do a tank sweep. A lot of people don't want to do it. Oh, I don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars on a tank sweep. And then they find out they got two tanks on their property. <laughs> you know, one, from, one from 80 or 90 years ago and one from 50 years ago because the other one had a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And 
things were, were different back then. Like people will bury them and, you know, cut the vent pipe off so you don't see it anymore. So sometimes it's not obvious that there's a tank in the ground. I have equipment that tells me when there's a tank in the ground and I can find it. But um, it's, it's, it's worth it to do. It's just worth it to spend a few dollars, get the tank sweep done, know that there's nothing there and you're not going to have an issue down the road when you go to sell the property. Like I said, once you, once you sign that dotted line, you That's own that. It. It's yours. It's your property now, whether it's good or bad, yeah. it's yours. So yeah. not, not a good move not to get the tank sweep done. Totally. Just make, it makes, it makes sense to just dot your yeah. I and just cross your T's. Um, yeah. It's cool. just, it, you know, do your due diligence and, uh, you know, I, I ask realtors to do that too. Reach, you know, tell your tell your clients, tell your buy, tell your buyers that they need, you know, you have to get a tank sweep done. You don't want to get stuck with a property that has a tank in the ground that's a leaker because it's on you at that point. And uh, most of them are pretty good at doing that. You know, stressing the point that it needs to be done and and be taken care of. Nice. Well, so Daniel, what are you seeing nowadays in your market in terms of? Um, you said you do investments. Uh, how are you seeing the market? Um, Bearing in, in Jersey right now, or in the areas you invest in, can you tell us a little bit about that? There, there's a shortage of properties right now. It's getting harder to get off-market deals as far as investment properties go, and even regular deals. That, you know, everybody's coming out of New York and coming to New Jersey. They don't want to be there anymore. So, hmm. the housing market is tight. Right? It's tough to find a property. Um, people are paying way over asking. Um, I just ran into a, situ a situation last week in Westfield where a guy was willing to pay almost wow. forty to thousand dollars more for a house than what it was listed for before uh COVID came and people are just you know they're, they're jacking the numbers up right now and people are coming from new york they'll spend it and the houses are they're kind of flying off the market right now as soon as they go on they're, they're getting offers and uh multiple offers and they're moving um the off-market deals as far as getting investment properties i'm lucky i just found one in uh, richfield um we're going to do something with that but it, it's tight out there now. It's not like it used to be. Things are changing. Now, COVID's going to change everything. Um, I think until they get a vaccine, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a different world that we live in right now. And it's going to change real estate. It's going to change investing. It's going to change a lot of things. Stock market. It's going to change a lot of different things to, uh, until this gets under control a little bit more. You know, we what had have you our, done in your business to kind of pivot or change uh, the way you do things for or COVID. There, there, there wasn't much you could do for a while. Like for two months, honestly, I just, I sat home. I, you know, nobody wanted you in their house. Nobody wanted to do anything. Everybody was very scared. Mm -hmm. And my wife has pre-existing conditions. So I had to be very careful with her that I didn't bring anything sure. back. I wasn't worried about me, but I don't want to bring something home to her with a weakened condition and, you know, have a problem. So for basically for two months, I didn't do anything. I just sat home. I made breakfast for my kids every day. It was it was actually a nice little break. It wasn't horrible. And I was able Quality to get to time, yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, I got to reconnect with my kids again a little bit. I haven't had like time off like that in 35 years. So wow, yeah. Nice little break. Um, I, I think things are going to get better slowly, but surely it's going to keep moving forward. And my phone's starting to ring now for the tank sweeps for the, you know, prices on renovations. Um, it, it's going to get better. It's just going to take time. It's it's not going to happen overnight. It's just going to be a slow process. But um, fortunately, I was able to get through it without too much damage. I had enough put away to be okay and not have to worry about it, you know. Nice. So good. Yeah. I feel bad for the people I didn't. A lot of people are suffering right now, and uh, yeah, not a good. Of, a lot of small businesses are closing. Even 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 big companies, you know, they're they're going. Yeah. Yeah, this, this affected people that you never thought in a million years would get affected. Everybody shutting yeah. down 400 stores, 300 stores. Right. It's, not, it's, it's not good what this did. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's bringing change. It's going to bring change to everything. And you have, my father told me a long time ago, there's only one thing that's constant in life is change. Yeah. And you change with it or you get run over, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> He passed that down to me, and that's that's something I believe in, and something I live by. You have to roll with things Absolutely. when they change, because everything in life is going to change at one point or another. Yeah. So, you got to flow with it and uh, make it all happen. Just keep. You got to be resilient and uh, resourceful, and just get out there and and flow with it and 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 make it all good to the best of your ability. Um, speaking of your your phone 
starting to ring. How can people reach you? What's the best way people can reach you? SDSreno.com SDS. is our website. And you can also reach me 973-332-3664. That's my phone number. You can call me anytime. Um, it rings a lot. If I don't pick up, please leave me a message. I promise I'll get back to you. Um, and w whatever your needs are, I'll, I'll do whatever my abilities are to help you and, and get you in the direction you need to be going. And where in Jersey are you operating? We, I'm all over. Um, I live in South Jersey. Um, I live by the Tom's River area, but I'm all over. Most of my work is in Union County. I'm getting a lot there. Uh, like I said, I have a property in, in Ridgefield. I'm in Bergen. I'll, I'll go wherever I have to go. I don't mind traveling to, to help somebody. Um, I commuted for 35 years with my regular job before I left that. So driving to me and, and getting to somebody is not an issue. Nice. I mean, that's I'm trying to get somebody out in, in Cherry Hill right now. Cherry Hill is like, I really haven't done any work out there, but I know some people that live out that way. So I found some subcontractors out there through them and explained to them the situation. And I'm getting numbers for people that are fair numbers. You know, even though they're not normal people, I explained to them who I am and what I do and, you know, what's going on. And I'm getting good numbers. I, I can always find a way. I can always, there's always a way to help somebody. You just got to be resourceful enough to dig through it and uh, take care of them. Nice. I mean, you, you, you stand by, you stand by your motto, you know, seek to serve. Yeah, that's, um, that's exactly, uh, that's exactly what I do. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. I feel it's important I, that I feel it comes back around when you do that, when you do something and you don't look for anything in return, it'll, it'll come to you. Yeah. It'll come to you over time. Um, you know, you do what you can. Like I don't work for free. I charge people for the services that I provide. You know, I have to eat too and take care of my family. But I, I feel my numbers are more than fair. Uh, I'm usually less than most contractors. And I, I, I try and do good work for people and make them happy. Nice. You know, sometimes, honestly, sometimes it's not per It's construction. It's renovation. Sometimes it doesn't go perfectly smooth. But again, then you got to adapt and find a way right. to fix it and, and, and make it right again. But at the end of the day, you just want people to be happy with your work and, uh, and, and make sure that they're comfortable and in, their, in their situation and, and make it all good. That's my, that's how I look at my job. It's just to make people make their lives easier. Um, take the headache off of them. They, people who are not in the trades, they don't want to deal with contractors and they don't, they don't know how to do contractors. They're getting beat up on numbers. Their prices are crazy. You know, I've, I've, I've dealt with guys that have gotten people off of Craigslist and, you know, failed inspections because the, the, the work is just horrible. It's the wrong gauge wire. The pipe sizing is wrong in the plumbing. It's just, you know, so you got to, you got to use quality people. And in, in the time that I've been doing this, I've, I've weeded out a lot of the bad people. And I have good quality guys now that, that understand what I'm doing and, and help out. And but, I mean, uh, we, we are all in the, in the same circle, right, Danny? So we can attest to, to, to your work. Uh, we're familiar with your work. So, um, you know, we also back up to, you know, what you're saying. Um, Cause Finding construction is one of the most challenging one uh, part of, of, of this whole transaction and finding reliable, um, affordable, uh, trustworthy people, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's key. And, right. uh, and, and you definitely live up to that. Well, I appreciate um, we'll, um, we'll make sure, um, we'll make sure to add um, the, your contact info in, in our information uh, below. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. And with that, I mean, Danny, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. And um, we'll catch you soon on our next, uh, in our next meetings. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks for uh, having me on and uh, putting some things out there for us. It's, it's all good stuff. And uh, let's go get some. All right. Thanks a lot, Danny. Thank, Have thank a good weekend. Thanks, Thanks you everybody. Too. Um, make sure you like, subscribe um, our page. We appreciate it. Um, uh, for you joining us and if you guys have any other questions uh, like I said we will include Danny's uh, info and um, in information below but you can also reach out to us if you if you need to reach him we'll, we'll definitely help you out with that in the meantime have a good weekend and we'll talk to you soon thanks guys take care Bye -bye. thanks Danny have a good one thank you you too